Hey everybody, this is the broken computer edition of Story Brain. I was in the process of making the Tom Cruise video and I killed my computer. So I have to get a new one. Uh, it was my fault. It's the first time I've done that in years. But that's going to take a couple days. And in the meantime, I can't type anything on that computer. And once I get a new computer, I have to migrate all the files onto that one and then keep working. So that's going to take a couple days. And in the meantime, I want to put something up, so I'm going to do something I've never done before, which is just talk about a topic, and I'm not, I haven't written this beforehand, and I'm not going to edit it, so you get to hear all the noises my mouth makes that I edit out for your benefit. Anyway, this is kind of topical because uh, in the last couple of days, Alpha Zero, which is a new artificial intelligence game playing program, beat Stockfish, which is the best chess program in the world which is actually a really big deal if you follow those topics. Alpha Zero came from Alpha Go, which uh, beat the best human players at the game Go, and then they found, Google found another way to do artificial intelligence learning, apparently. And they made a new program called Alpha Zero, which beat Alpha Go, and then they put it on chess, and in four hours it played, I think it's 700 million games against itself, and learned without preconceptions, which is a good way to learn. And it then beat Stockfish, which is a really big deal. And this relates to AI, it's a topical thing, it's, it's current, and it relates to some things that are my own opinions about creativity and problem solving, so I think I can talk about it. Especially because in the last, uh, I don't know, last few weeks since I've been looking at what people want me to put on the channel, I've gotten uh, quite a few comments and questions about my own opinions about creativity and problem solving, which I guess I never talked about because I didn't think people would find it that interesting. And, you know, people ask me, what kind of books have you read, or what drugs do you do? Which, in a way, is really different forms of the same question. People just want to know, I guess, what the basis is of some of the stuff I say, or what, where the ideas come from. So I'll get to talk about that a little bit, too. Anyway, I'm kind of a skeptic about artificial intelligence. I, I did a video called uh, Why Computers Will Take Over Entertainment, where I talked about AI and AI used to write movies. And of course I've done a video on chess, so I have this stuff in my head already. And one thing I didn't really emphasize in the other video is that I'm kind of a skeptic when it comes to AI because you see it all the time. And it really reminds me of the flying car which was, you know, that really big idea in the 50s and 60s that never really panned out into anything because the real-world problems in implementing that turned out not to be worth making it. You know, you can't have people... Not everybody can have a pilot's license. You're flying in three dimensions instead of two. How do you determine who goes at what height? You're going to have collisions, which are going to be far more fatal. They're much more expensive, require much more power, and it's just, you know, I think they've developed cars or things the size of cars that can fly, but nothing else has come of it. Kind of like video phones. People do FaceTime now, but people just don't want to bother with being presentable when they talk to somebody all the time. So, AI is in that pocket um, where it could come out the same way. It's very sexy to talk about, and you can make movies about it, and people love to click about it and hear about it, and people use it to sell things. But it's so sexy that it's almost a problem because we, like I say, we use our emotional impression to judge the importance of something, but our emotional impression is based on things like how visual something is, the amount of effect it would have on your life, and not what it would actually take to make that happen and problems that will come up along the way. Most businesses fail because people can think of good ideas but they don't think about the actual implementation of those ideas, and that's where things die, and that's what happens with a lot of these sexy ideas. And I have this kind of rule that I go by where the sexier something is to think about, in a lot of cases, the less likely it is to actually come true as a reality of the future, because the more people want to think about something, the more energy they'll put into making it happen. And if something is really, really popular, and millions of people are interested in it and reading about it, then that means there's a lot of people who are putting money into it. And if you're not realizing it with all the extra effort that's being put into that thing, it's likely, it becomes more and more likely that it's not going to matter, ultimately. Like, like I said, the flying car, or even time travel. So, the um, AI is in that spot now, where it's really sexy and everybody likes to hear about it and talk about it, but that sexiness is 
putting a lot of energy into it and there's stuff coming out about it but it's much more likely that something much less sexy is going to affect our lives like maybe carbon nanotubes which is a new way of making uh making things which is lighter and stronger which will probably change the way we construct things and stuff like that you know in the 50s everybody was into the flying car but nobody was really thinking about very few people were thinking about transistors and computer chips and those are the things that ended up making the difference so it's the same thing here so anyway back to alpha zero it had a really great result really eye-popping i'm interested in it everybody who plays chess is interested in it everybody who follows ai is interested in it which is cool i mean you know, it's fun to see people interested in the topic and i like to read about it even if i think it's not going anywhere but one of the things that you can learn from this alpha zero thing is that i think ai which i think will be useful it's just that it's a little distorted right now and it's distracting people from other stuff that could be much more productive but an example here from alpha zero is that ai can actually be too good and it can be so good that you don't learn from it and i'll give you an example of what i mean let's say you show alpha zero the basic opening of chess where you move your king's pawn uh, two spaces forward and then your opponent moves their king's pawn two spaces forward you show that to alpha zero and it just says uh, white will win in 77 moves via checkmate and it just shows you the, the, the line it just shows you the best possible moves from each side which inevitably ends in a checkmate for white okay that's great okay and that's by the strict terms of the way people work on these things that's the solution that's the best possible moves by every player but here's the thing what if your opponent plays something else? What, what it will objectively be is a mate in less than 77 moves. But you don't necessarily know what that line is. And if Alpha Zero is going to show you, or this perfect AI is going to show you what that line is, it's still not going to tell you how and why. So all you can do then is memorize the winning line, then memorize the responses to the winning lines. And that's not actually learning. And Alpha Zero may not have an evaluation thing where it shows you what the moves are in the first place. I'm not a programmer. I haven't looked at it. So if it doesn't, then it's really not going to be useful. And people usually use those lines where Stockfish, which is the program that Alpha Zero beat, which is or was the strongest chess program, would show you what it thinks of a position, which team, which uh, side is winning by how much using numbers, and it would show you which which are the best moves. Um, if Alpha Zero has that then people can learn from that the same way but it's not there's only so much you can get out of that too because again it doesn't show you why you can put in a move and it will show you a new line but it won't show you why and you have to guess yourself and then you can't do anything but memorize the line and if alpha zero or the program is going to show you all the lines then it's going to just show you a huge amount of information which is just too much for you to take in and you're going to shut down anyway so you can't <clears throat> without an understanding of why you're doing what you're doing you can't use that information that well you can only memorize what you're being told and when anything happens that's outside what you memorized you don't know what to do and this of course this happens outside this example too so this is the problem that's being created if people are going to follow this line of reasoning and line of doing things alpha zero itself could definitely be useful especially in things that are objective and um involve numbers and things that you can program directly or teach an ai to do that have objective results and they might be doing that now i'm sure they're working on those things i'm not one of the programmers but there's a big difference between programming and dealing with problems in the real world. And, okay, this is one of the things I think people want to hear about. If you'll forgive me for saying this, people who program computers aren't necessarily working on problems in the real world, because in the real world, you don't have objective criteria. You don't necessarily know when you've done the best job. And that's one of the things that fools people the most, is they think they're doing as well as they can, and there's all kinds of things that we just totally miss, that we don't realize until we go back and from the very beginning examine everything we've done and try to understand it fully starting from scratch so you have objective rules and measures of success in chess and games like go and mathematics i guess too 
But in the real world, everything is subjective, okay? And AlphaZero is a self-learning computer program that learns by playing against itself, measuring success or failure, and then doing it again and again and again, and doing different things and seeing which succeeds more often. To learn chess, it only took it four hours, but that's misleading because it played against itself 700 million times. Now let's say you were going to take Alpha Zero and try to teach it to do a real world task, like writing a good story. You, it doesn't have any way of knowing that it did a good job. The only thing you can do is have people rate the resulting story, and you're not going to have 700 million stories that people are going to be able to rate, especially when people have individual biases that come into play that you can't do. One of the things we talk about on the channel, people have individual biases that have nothing to do with what they read and or are not predictable at all from what you wrote. And when you do that, when you put that in front of people, you're going to get results that are completely unpredictable. The only way to go past that is to use the wisdom of is to use the wisdom of crowds, where you're going to have to have each story rated by a large number of people, so those random biases cancel out, and you get an actual, fairly objective measurement of what that story does for people. You can't do that with 700 million stories, like you like Alpha Zero could with 700 million games. So, it's almost hopeless in that re in that regard. And when you apply a lot of other real-world problems where it won't be able to play against itself and no success or failure, you're going to have those problems too. So what I think might happen is that Alpha Zero could end up being like movie spoilers, where you play a game and you show it to Alpha Zero and it just shows you what the answer was. And it's going to be really hard to learn from that. But it'll still be interesting and perhaps give you some new things to think about. But you're going to have to apply your own mind. And it's not going to be able to replace the human mind in real human problems. Anyway, there's going to be a lot more stuff that happens in the future with AI. So we'll have plenty to talk about. We'll see how it develops and where it leads. Hopefully it doesn't distract people too much from real world problem solving. Because it is sexy. And I'm going to get my new computer and go back to work on that Tom Cruise video. So if you actually watch this since it's going to be an audio and I won't be able to even edit it much because I can't do a lot on my computer. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and I will put something else up soon. Thanks.